you wrote a great piece on Forbes, and then you and I actually perused the ARM party at CES, in which I was hanging out with you, and I had to hear no less than 10 times, hey, Pat, great Forbes article. It's like, yep, you're great. Yeah. And, and then it, and everyone's like, what'd you write? And I was like, hey, Pat, great Forbes article. Uh, yeah. Well, here's the good news. I, I didn't write it on Forbes. I wrote it on my own site, oh, which... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. I just want to make sure people... Heard a great know. article. It was so assumptive of me. I just want to make sure people... Uh, no, I wrote a research note. Uh, we're writing more and more uh, on our own website. I mean, we're putting out more research-grade material like we did for Blackhawk. But here, here's the skinny, folks. Um, ARM's business model historically has been, let's give an architectural license to certain companies very narrow to address markets and geographies, right? So here... here in smartphones with Apple based out of the United States, uh, they, they gave Apple an architecture license so they could go off and build their own CPU. Now, uh, designing your own CPU and building it can cost between about half a billion dollars uh, all in. I know that because I used to do this for a living. It's very expensive and I'm even, uh, uh, you know, it, it is getting easier, don't get me wrong, but if you're doing a grounds up design, uh, it is it is very expensive to take it out to multiple platforms. So uh, the other business model, if it's not an architecture license, uh, is is to take some off the shelf IP uh, from ARM. And there's varying levels of 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 engagements that that ARM has. ARM makes very little on the architecture licenses if there's a ton of um, a ton of volume, right? Like like Apple. The law of diminishing return. No, it totally is. And then you have somebody uh, like Qualcomm that comes along with a Nuvia-based architecture, and they're suing each other, by the way, uh, on this. But let's put that aside. You have the two largest smartphone platform providers on the planet that have architecture licenses, uh, and that the performance is so much better than than what you get with ARM off the shelf. It becomes an issue. It becomes a market issue, and quite frankly, it's a business issue for ARM. So. The big announcement was that uh, ARM's Blackhawk CPU uh, is uh, designed to be the best smartphone CPU core this year. And these were their words that they communicated to me, uh, not, not mine or inferring based on some rumor. Uh, I had a conversation with ARM, got some relatively um, some basic information about it, asked, asked some Q&A, but, but the goal here is literally that this Blackhawk CPU will outperform the leading edge from Qualcomm and Apple, right? And that is a big, bold uh, statement out there, almost as audacious as saying that Neoverse would be higher performance than Xeon, which, by the way, on certain workloads, it is. And we see that at AWS uh, with Graviton. Uh, and we're seeing a lot more people sign up, like Microsoft brought out their new ARM-based SOC, and it's likely that uh, Google uh, will too. So is that audacious? Absolutely. Uh, is this a giant check to write uh, to say that this would have these performance levels? And by the way, I'm assuming performance levels at the right wattage, right? Um, and at a, at a reasonable at a reasonable cost, but... It's a big deal. It's a big deal for ARM, and I think it's a big deal for the industry. So you can imagine people like uh, MediaTek, uh, Samsung, related to Exynos. Even though most of the, you know, all the premium stuff today is uh, is is Qualcomm, but I love the competition. That's where I'll end this. More competition is good. Uh, ARM has to prove a lot of things. But by the way, this design's done. If phones are going to be out at the end of this year, then it's done. OK, it, it, it's, you know, the, the paint, the paint is basically dry and it needs to be implemented. So they must be very confident in what they think that both the uh, uh, Qualcomm Nuvia roadmap is, but also uh, Apple. Yeah, great research note, Pat, on more insights and strategies blog. Um, I do appreciate that. Uh, look, you know, you did a really good job and your assessment um, hit kind of the high notes of what I was thinking about. And the things I'm thinking about is, you know, Arm has been a licensing company and it has been a licensing company in an era where very few companies could build meaningful chips. Um, and so, 
Now they are a licensing company in an era where it's becoming increasingly in vogue and impossible for more companies with resource and capacity to design and not only design chips, but to, you know, take something out of the box, put it into use and create competitive products. Um, you know, in 1995, people really cared what chip was in their PC. Um, I don't know that that's is true anymore. And, you know, that's not really just my interpretation. This is from talking to the leaders of the OEMs, you know, about silicon diversity and hearing what they are saying about, well, is it good to have three, four, five, six variants of silicon? And of course, you and I will always say it's great for competition. Yeah. It's good for competition, but is it good um, for the consumer? And I don't know that the consumer knows, you know, um, someone said to me, Pat, that Apple could take a dump in a box and sell 10, 10 million units. Um, and, and, and that doesn't exactly correlate to ARM, but my point is, is that if the right company is selling the product, people will buy it. And so, you know, ARM is seeing an increasing financial gain. And especially now as a publicly traded company has to figure out a way to grow its revenue. Um, and that's a per device growth of revenue. Um, in the areas in which they compete. We know that the work they've done, <laughs> excuse me, the work they've done in data center has been successful, profitable, but it's still very small for ARM. Mm -hmm. It will grow, but the way they've been able to support and enable a whole new group of entrants into the market, they've been able to, to do very well from that. The more they can create a high value licensing, IP licensing agreement, where people will take and do minimal modification, and in the case of full of their lowest level licensing, there's no modification. If I'm, am I right, Pat, about that? About no modification of the ESF. Um, but this is a way you sort of hedge. We know there is an ongoing litigation that's going on with uh, Qualcomm and ARM. I'm sure this has something to do with it. Um, on the other side of this, though, Pat, I'll say, you know, if ARM can build a leading end, high end processor that you can take right out the box. It sort of brings some interesting questions to OEMs that have either A, spent a lot of time and money to modify them, and B, what's the value of that work, the architectural work to modify them if someone can just take it out of the box and bring it out to market. It also brings the opportunity back to the forefront for risk five, I think, but I will say we know that's a longer journey. So if some of the companies feel that ARM is becoming too much of a competitor and they don't wanna keep building the ARM ecosystem, could they go a different direction? I don't see that happening very quickly, but I think that risk always exists. And I think it's a calculated risk right now for ARM. But look, they're moving very quickly, Pat. They've got pressures of being a public company. Um, they've got a reason to want to get in right now with this AI cycle. Um, and the sooner this can hit the market and be available, um, the more the company can potentially benefit from.